there's a lot more to climate than temperature. There are extremes, there's precipitation or lack of precipitation, uh, there's what happens to the ocean, which holds much more heat than the atmosphere, and there's also dramatic differences in the effects of climate change on different places. The problem until this past decade has been that modeling wasn't good enough to say much about exactly where these different phenomena would occur. As the grid scales get smaller, they're now starting to be able to say things about where things will happen. So which parts of the world will experience more drought, more flooding, more extreme weather events, more cold, some of them will get colder, melting of glaciers, and so on. Once you can start to do that, then you're identifying winners and losers. As long as it's all one big global we, we have this problem of everyone saying, well, you know, I'm not like you, or my community's different from yours. We, we, and you can argue about that forever, but once you begin to know who is likely to actually benefit and who will lose, um, then you have uh, differential views of how important this problem is. If you're gonna win, why would you care? I was looking at an incident that took place during Copenhagen um, in 2009, a moment where Lumumba de Aping, the uh, negotiator for the G77, responds to the circulation of what was called the Danish text that was um, uh, circulated amongst the G20, understanding climate change as a problem of um, average temperature increase. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a kind of violent obstruction, um, this is an example of it, because of course, mm -hmm. um, the, the two degree proposal um, was an average, uh, mm -hmm. a global average. Mm -hmm. And so of course Lumumba de Aping um, famously calls this press conference um, and, and has this very melodramatic moment where he's a, you know, he's a diplomat, um, Sudanese, mm -hmm. starts weeping mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and makes this accusation of climate genocide. And he says what this amounts to is a recolonization of the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this time instead of ivory, it was CO2. Um, and he makes the argument, which was backed up by scientific evidence, so it's kind of mobilizing science this time against the G20, saying, you know, in parts of Africa that he was there to represent, this would mean a 3.5 degree increase. Mm -hmm. And, you know, estimates say that this could lead to upwards of, you know, an additional 100,000, 150,000 deaths per year in the coming decades, let alone um, the kinds of consequences it would have on exacerbating the existing conflict. Okay. Exactly, but the press described him as hysterical. They said, how dare you use this language genocide, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of invoke the Holocaust? Mm -hmm. um, how dare you kind of invoke the, the kind of colonization? And they actually dismissed him and started to like smear campaign him because precisely of his proximity to this kind of events that had taken place in, in, in Sudan in the years before. Mm -hmm. um, and I always thought that in fact it was precisely his proximity to those events in Africa that gave him a kind of insight Absolutely. into the potential. And actually was, was that actually finally drew out this, um, this, this kind of uh, indignant, uh, indignant response.